Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Stabin County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 49, hosted by SSCL librarian Linda Reimer. This is the Friday, April 23rd, 2021 edition of Library Connections. Jumping right in with the top five fiction bestsellers of the week at number one, Ocean Prey by John Sanford, the 31st book in the Prey series. When federal officers are killed, Lucas Davenport and Virgil Flowers team up to investigate matters. At number two, The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. The poem read on President Joe Biden's inauguration day by the youngest poet to write and perform an inaugural poem. At number three, The Devil's Hand by Jack Carr the fourth book in the Terminal List series. James Reese is given a top secret CIA mission. At number four, appropriately enough, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. As dust storms roll during the Great Depression, Elsa must choose between saving the family and farm or heading west. And at number five, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. In a quiet town on the North Carolina coast in 1969, a young woman who survived alone in the marsh becomes a murder suspect. And moving along to the top five nonfiction bestsellers of the week, at number one, On the House by John Boehner. The former Speaker of the House reflects on his time in Washington, key political figures, and the current state of the Republican Party. At number two, Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe, a portrait of the Sackler family Known for their philanthropy towards institutions around the world and their involvement with Valium and Oxycontin. At number three, The Code Breaker by Walter Isaacson. How the Nobel Prize winner Jennifer Doudna and her colleagues invented CRISPR, a tool that can edit DNA. At number four, Broken Horses by Brandi Carlisle. The Grammy award-winning singer and songwriter recounts difficulties during her formative years and her hard-won successes. And at number five, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind in Innovative Treatments for Recovery. Our first recommended read for this week is a mystery. It's called Death at La Fenicia by Donna Leone. A breathless beginning and an unexpected lack of reference to the lush setting mark this lively launch of a projected series of Venetian mysteries. When legendary German conductor Helmut Wellauer is found dead in his dressing room, two acts into a performance of La Traviata, police commissario Guido Brunetti is called in. Among those who might have provided the cyanide poison that killed the maestro, Immediate suspects include the vaunted conductor's coolly indifferent young wife, 
and those many in the music industry who are offended by his homophobia. Methodically probing into the victim's past, Brunetti also uncovers Wellauer's Nazi sympathies and a lead to a trio of singing sisters from yesteryear, one now destitute, one dead, and the other missing. Though burdened by a dictatorial superior and two lumpen subordinates, Brunetti gets help from his aristocratic wife and her well-connected parents. The narrative's best moments involve Brunetti's wry exchanges with his colleagues and the cunningly masked obvious solution. This is the first of 30 books and counting in the excellent Guido Brunetti mystery series. This novel was published in the early 90s, and if you're a fan of the author Donna Leone and you've read this series for years, check out the new book, Transient Desires, which was just published. Our second recommended read for this week is historical fiction. It's called The Girls in the Stilt House, written by Kelly Mustaine. Set in the early 1920s, Mustaine's remarkable debut focuses on two teenage girls, one white, the other black, in Mississippi's Natchez Trace. Ada Morgan's trapper father makes most of his money stealing pelts from others' traps and barely puts food on the table. Matilda Patterson is the daughter of a sharecropper who dreams of farming his own plot. Both fathers are under the thumb of a local bootlegger who puts their families at risk. Ada runs away following a carnival musician to Louisiana, but returns home after he leaves her. Matilda, who writes newspaper articles about prejudice and poverty in the Deep South under a pseudonym, dreams of joining a friend who lives in Ohio. Brought together by a shocking twist of fate, the girls form an uneasy alliance to survive amid growing racial tension and violence in the trace. Authentic characters complement the vivid setting. Readers will feel the weight of the trace's humidity in this nearly flawless tale of loss, perseverance, and redemption. And that is the Starred Publishers Weekly Review. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is This Tender Land, written by William Kent Kruger and read by Scott Brick. Odie O'Bannon remembers 1932 when he was 12 and had one of the great adventures of his life. During the Great Depression, Odie and his older brother Albert were the only white children at the Lincoln Indian Training School. The O'Bannons were orphans. While the other children had been taken away from their parents to have their native cultures and languages beaten out of them. Mrs. Brickman, known to the children as the Black Witch, oversaw the abusive school and after the tragic death of a protector, Odie and Albert fled, along with two other vagabonds, taking to the river to escape. There they find kindness and assistance in unexpected places. Kruger's second coming-of-age story is not the sequel to Ordinary Grace. It's his version of Huckleberry Finn, or The Odyssey. 
as adolescents are forced to move toward adulthood. It's a remarkable story of a search for home that also reveals the abusive treatment of Native American children in schools and the wanderings of people during the Depression. Verdict. Readers expecting an actual mystery from crime writer Kruger might be disappointed, but those who want to read about the mystery of life will discover what one of Odie's companions observes. You tell stories, but they're real. There are monsters and they eat the heart of children. And that is the Starred Library Journal Review. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is a mystery. It's not a crime mystery per se, but it is a mystery. It's called The Truth About Melody Brown. It's a novel written by Lisa Jewell and read by Antonia Beamish. When she was a child, Melody Brown's house burned down, destroying all her family's possessions and her memories. Ever since this tragic event, Melody Brown has had no recollection of her life before she was rescued from the flames. Now in her early 30s, Melody is a single mother living in the middle of London with her teenage son. She hasn't seen her parents since she left home at 15 but Melody has no desire to reconnect until one night. While attending a hypnotist show with a date, she faints. And when she comes around, she is suddenly overwhelmed with fragmented memories of her life before that fateful fire. Slowly, she begins the arduous process of piecing together the real story of her childhood. Her journey takes her up and down the countryside to seaside towns, to the back streets of London, where she meets strangers who seem to love her like her own. But the more answers she uncovers, the more questions she is left with, and Melody can't help but wonder if she'll ever know the truth about her past. And that would be the whole truth about her past. And we'll have to listen or read the book to find out. Our first streaming recommendation for this week is the new TV series Shadow and Bone, available through Netflix. Based on Lee Bardigo's popular series of novels, Shadow and Bone is set in a highly stratified fantasy world where the existence of rampaging monsters makes simple tasks like long distance communication and supply gathering difficult. Jessie May Lai plays Alina Starkov, a soldier whose superpowers could just be the key to freeing her and her friends and her foes from the daily fear of gruesome death. Created by Eric Heiserer, the series follows the book's lead, presenting a complex mythology featuring mystics and gangsters, all dressed as though they just stepped out of early 20th century Europe. The action sequences are effects heavy and pulpy, but the story is mainly about the politics and the treachery attending the arrival of a potential world-saving savior. So if you're on the mood for a fantasy adventure series, check out Shadow and Bone. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the classic film, The Terminator from 1984. It's available through Amazon Prime Video and Hoopla. The first film in the Terminator series revolves around three characters in a do or die situation. The tale begins in a dystopian future. Human rebels have turned the tide against machines 
that nearly wiped them out. The machines send the titular cyborg, Arnold Schwarzenegger, through a time portal to kill Sarah Connor, Linda Hamilton, the mother of future resistance leader John Connor, while the human said guerrilla warrior Kyle Reese, Michael Bain, to protect her. And yes, it's got a science fiction background, but it really is a character study. It's the first film in the Terminator series, and if you haven't seen it, check it out. If you haven't seen it for a while, it might be fun to watch it again. And finally, our Hoopla recommendation for this week. I'm going to recommend the 2013 PBS documentary, 10 Buildings That Changed America. A state capital that Thomas Jefferson designed to resemble a Roman temple, the home of Henry Ford's first assembly line, the first indoor regional shopping mall, an airport with a swooping concrete roof that seems to float on air. These are among the buildings surveyed in this cross-country journey to 10 influential works of American architecture. Meet the daring architects who imagined them and learn the shocking, funny, and even sad stories of how they came to be. They changed the way we live, work, worship, learn, shop, and play. Jeffrey Bayer hosts. And finally, our Odd Duck recommendation of the week. This week, I'm going to suggest that you check out the STLS website. That is the website of the Southern Tier Library System, found at www.stls.org. The Southern Tier Library System encompasses all the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties, including, of course, our own Southeast Steuben County Library. And they have some very useful information on their website. So we're going to take a quick look. So here we see the top portion of the STLS website. There are some neat menus that you see and the banner there. It says home, COVID resources about STLS services, quick links for the public. So I urge you to check those out. But the number one thing I want to draw your attention to at the moment is the chart, which we see the top portion of there. It says member library open status and services currently offered. So if you want to know if any library in the Southern Tier Library System is open and allowing the public to come into the library, you want to check out this list. Let's take a look at an expanded version of the list. So here is an expanded list. This still isn't all the libraries in the system, but it gives you an idea. It's an alphabetical list and it tells you whether the libraries are offering curbside or lobby service or access to the CERC desk, in which case you can go into the library. So that's very useful information. And also I want to direct you to the text. It's very small, but in the middle of the page, just above the chart, actually, it says, you can find a list of all STLS member libraries here. And the here is in blue. Now, if we were really on the STLS website and not looking at a video, we could click or tap on that link and be redirected to the member library directory page. But we can't do that, obviously, because this is a video. So I'm going to show you how to quickly get there. So we start out by going to the STLS website. And then you want to tap or click on the About STLS menu to open it. And we want the second option, STLS Member Library Directory. So here we see the Member Library Directory. And this is an interactive directory. And the map is really cool. It shows you all the libraries and reading centers in the system. They're color coded by county. You can click or tap on any of those little circles to be redirected to the library or reading center's website so you can find out all about that library or reading center. And of course it is kind of tiny, but you can make it bigger on your own device. Or you can use what I find most helpful is the list underneath the map. You'll see it says in bold Allegheny. And there's the top portion of a list of libraries. In blue there it says Alfred Box of Books Library, Almond 20th Century Club, and over free library. That's the top portion of the list of public libraries in Allegheny County. 
in Allegheny is the default because you know we're library folks and we like alphabetical order but you can in fact select any of the counties just by clicking or tapping on the other links it says Chemung, Schuyler, Steuben, and Yates to the right of Allegheny if you want to see the public libraries in Steuben County for example you would tap on the word Steuben and you'll get a list and then you can just click or tap on the title of the library you're interested in knowing more about and you'll be redirected to that library's website now there's quite a few libraries and reading centers in the system so i'm not going to show you all the websites but i am going to show you a few so here we see four stls member libraries websites going clockwise from the top left corner the alfred box of books library that's in allegheny county of course, our own Southeast Steuben County Library, the Penyan Public Library, and bottom left-hand corner, the Steele Memorial Library. So those are just four, but you get the idea. You can find out about the calendar of events and all kinds of neat information through each library's website. And that is our Odd Duck of the Week. And just a little heads up, just a piece of news to note, on Thursday, April 29th, 2021, and that is this upcoming Thursday, the Southeast Steuben County Library will be closed to the public and the internet, Wi-Fi, and phone service at the library will be out of order due to building maintenance. So if you wanna contact us or visit us, just be aware next Thursday, the library will be closed and will be cut off from phone service and the internet. We'll try not to go into shock. I'm sure we won't, but we'll be back on Friday morning as usual. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, let me know. You can send an email to me at rhymerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. Again, that's r-e-i-m-e-r-l at stls.org. And of course, you can always call the library too, and I'll give you the phone number in just a second. Current library hours are Mondays and Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and we are currently closed on Wednesdays and Sundays. Here we see the library's website found at ssclibrary.org. You can find a whole host of information about the library through our website, including our calendar of events and the list of online catalogs. The library's appointments page is also found on our website. Simply click on the purple Make Appointment text located near the top of each page on our website, and you can make an appointment to use a public computer or for curbside pickup. StarCat and the BookMine app. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials, all of which are available for all cardholders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System, and that encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny Counties. If you'd like to use the web version of the catalog, you can go online and go to starcat.stls.org. And if you prefer using an app, you can download the BookMine app which is seen on the right side of the screen from your app store. The Digital Catalog with companion apps Libby and Overdrive. The Digital Catalog features eBooks, downloadable audiobooks, a handful of streaming videos, and digital magazines. You can access the catalog online at stls.overdrive.com or if you prefer to use an app, download the Libby app to your newer device or the OverDrive app to your older device or your Kindle tablet. You can also use a dedicated e-reader like a Kindle Paperwhite and enjoy library eBooks on that device. The digital catalog like StarCat is available to all card holders within the Southern Tier library system, and it's a terrific catalog. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features eBooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout, no waiting, 
for Southeast Stabane County Library card holders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. You can find the Hoopla catalog online at hoopladigital.com or you can download the Hoopla app to your smartphone, tablet, smart TV, or video streaming player. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library services during the pandemic or want to make an appointment for curbside pickup, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's phone number is area code 607 936-3713. You can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. We have five of them. The Book Club for Adults, which offers information as you would expect about the monthly book club for adults. The local history blog, Corning NY History. Creation Stationery, the Makerspace blog. Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells. And Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog, which also occasionally offers some helpful how-to tech tips. Try saying that 10 times fast, helpful tech tips. And here are our references of the week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great day.